plague of 1348 AD was the greatest, most universal and mortally devastating that ever ravaged this globe. It never had a parallel either before or since. Thus wrote scholar Thomas Short in his historical scientific treatise of 1749 AD. He remarked, we have a more particular history of it than of any that preceded. For as it visited every inhabited corner of the earth, so every nation or people that understood letters kept records. Its spread was implacable, relentless and devastating. Short minutely details the cataclysmic death rates that followed it from nation to nation and town to town. Death rates varied, but collective data suggests that in the final mortality count, perhaps as much as 80% of the world population perished. Hear this typical quote. In some few places, it was as favourable as to leave a third part of men alive. In others, it took 15 out of 16. Compare this to one of the most devastating of modern human infections, the Spanish flu epidemic circa 1920. In this recent event, some 50 million perished out of a world population of around 2,000 million or around 2% worldwide. The bubonic plague of 1348 AD, where a short eludes up to 80% of all peoples perished, was by comparison an horrendous scenario. More modern sources believe it was more like 30% of the world perished, but the comparison is still vast. So what made this plague, normally attributed to the bacteria Yersinia pestis, so virulent, highly contagious and invasive? In modern times, this same bacteria is still deadly but the death rate is comparatively mild. Why this modern comparative lack of virulence? We have much evidence to examine, for as Thomas Short notes, the event is well documented. For instance, the prices of all foodstuffs, the treatments, incubation times, localities, death tolls, spectrum of vulnerable victims and numerous well-recorded data of, let's say, the obvious, more mundane type. But what is more baffling, interesting and highly contentious are the accompanying geophysical dramas. These clues, I contend, lead us to a deeper understanding of the tragic virulence of this and indeed other related catastrophic but less virulent plagues that followed. Let us look at some of these intriguing observations that raise questions as to how unusual the events of that time were compared to the relative stability of today's placid environment. Thomas Short draws from the Chronicle of Magdeburg and numerous sources to illustrate the accompanying phenomena in the 1348 AD bubonic plague. It began in Cathay in Asia, by reason of an igneous vapour or sulphurous fire breaking forth from the earth or falling from heaven, which utterly consumed men, beasts, houses, stones and trees to the very ground, and stretched forward rolling on smoking balls of stinking pestilential fire for 60 miles of the continent, killing insects and vermin. This plague killed men in two or three days. In Greece and Italy, earthquakes swallowed many cities, castles and towns. Mountains in Cyprus were thrown together as one. Famine was everywhere with terrible floods, storms and tempests. Fearful meteors of flames and fire in the air succeeded by excessive drought and want of water with the destruction of most animals and vegetables. The fens and marshes dried up. A great comet called Negra appeared during which followed great earthquakes, tempests, great thunder and lightning. Several towns, 
villages, mountains and thousands of people were swallowed up. The courses of rivers were stopped and great chasms in the earth opened up and sent forth bloody liquids. Strangely, women spontaneously boarded in all countries. The rivers gushed crimson, comets, meteors, fire beams and the heavens were on fire. To our modern sceptical ears, much of these lamentations seem ridiculous. But remember, these are not from just one isolated witness, but from many sources and many countries, and the death toll supports what would otherwise read as something out of Dante's Inferno. However, let us take at least 50% of these testimonies as valid. They strongly suggest electromagnetic phenomena that are seen even today in volcanoes, earthquakes and tornadoes and the electric phenomena observed in dramatic weather. However, these historical observations in 1348 AD suggest a grossly more vigorous scenario. As we contemplate these extraordinary factors, let's dwell on what we can reasonably deduce the overall controllers of weather, volcanoes, earthquakes and tsunamis are and their relationship to causative cosmological factors. The sun, planets, meteors, comets and the broad spectrum of electromagnetic wavelengths such as gamma rays, cosmic rays and relativistic radiation are all implicated as moderators of life on Earth. Least we forget the effect of the plasma environment in the solar system and beyond, and its support of electrical and magnetic phenomena such as Z-pinches. The rigorous foundational work of Danish physicist Professor Henrik Svensbach at the Division of Solar System Physics convinces us that the Sun, with its CMEs, solar flares and various radiations, has much control over Earth's cloud cover via their moderation of cosmic ray effects. Precipitation is thus grossly affected. Svensmark comments, there is a beautiful correlation between the number of cosmic rays hitting the Earth and its cloud cover. He notes, it is apparent that the sun moderates that by means of coronal mass ejections and other phenomena. Thus, the sun directly influences Earth's weather. Noted meteorologist Paul Dorian sums this up. Over the long term, the sun is the main driver of weather and climate on Earth, and it is also connected to such phenomena as the aurora borealis. It controls the upper atmosphere high latitude blocking and the influx of cosmic rays into Earth's atmosphere. The influx of cosmic rays into the Earth's atmosphere from outer space tends to increase dramatically during solar minimum. Interestingly, there is evidence that solar activity plays a role in volcanic activity on our planet. In fact, in times of low solar activity, such as the current solar minimum, volcanic activity tends to rise. The Tambura volcanic eruption in Indonesia during 1815 is connected to the unusually long period of low solar activity known as the Dalton Minimum, 1795 to 1823. The following year of 1816 was unusually cold throughout much of the world and it is now referred to as the year without a summer. Yet another study suggests that the increase in cosmic rays during times of low solar activity actually causes an increase in volcanic activity. Another theory suggests that solar flares may cause changes in atmospheric circulation patterns that abruptly alter the Earth's spin. 
It's now recognised that earthquakes are heavily influenced by electrical factors, whether from distortion of rocks and the subsequent generation of electric currents or by telluric currents from within the Earth that are probably linked to the solar Earth axis. Similarly, volcanoes have a high incidence of lightning discharge, often explained by friction between gaseous particles, radon, or in my opinion, directly from solar influences. The influence of electricity on living forms, and more particularly on viruses, moulds and bacteria and other possibly pathogenic organisms. For instance, an atmosphere of largely positive ions encourages bacterial growth. The influence of sunspot minima is characterised by weakening of the interplanetary magnetic field near the Earth, which allows for the entry of cosmic rays. Additionally, Svensmark notes when galactic cosmic rays collide with the atmosphere, they produce a cascade of secondary particles, including neutrons and muons, that continue to penetrate the atmosphere. The cascade continues until the particle energy becomes so low and cosmic rays are effectively stopped. This happens at around the 16 to 20 kilometer mark. However, under more intense bombardment or lack of moderating solar influence, significant neutrons and other electromagnetic radiation reach ground level and increase mutation rates along the mitochondrial axis. This could dramatically affect the virility of any microbe or cell for that matter. Modern studies also reveal the carriage of bacteria, viruses and microparticles at very high altitude vectors above the Earth, making them more vulnerable at sunspot minima to the effects of all radiations, including X-rays, as they descend back to Earth. This combination of what I regard as electrical phenomena lends a powerful case to its effect on biological growth of all organisms, but not only with phenomena such as death from drought and famine, but at a molecular level. I postulate that very large electromagnetic influence from comets, the sun, extraneous electromagnetic invasions influence the Earth's electret status and led to chaotic growth and virulence of the plague bacteria. Both in 1348 AD and in preceding and future events, such as Little Ice Age, with its wolf, sporer and maunder chaotic weather minimums. These were also times of sunspot minima. These world-changing weather patterns were not only extremes in temperature, but more particularly a collection of chaotic as distinct from predictable seasons. For instance, crop-destroying rains at harvest time, pollen-destroying super winds, long hot droughts bringing famine and pestilence, rainy summers encouraging mould-destroying fungi. Nature often uses triggers based on hard to pinpoint factors when loosing its newest progeny. We see swarms of termites loosed under precise signals, be it weather or clever triggers. We see inexplicable mice plagues, seasonal flus, wars and lotus swarms. Many and varied are nature. But what if nature relies on electromagnetic signals and these become chaotic. I suspect the devastating 1348 AD bubonic plague illustrates just such a black picture. <laughs>